complex human organism. It's a self um, repairing, self regenerating organism. And it is a complex milieu of integrated mechanical, physiological and psychological mechanisms, which are responding to the external and internal personal environments, external and internal environments, every second of your life. Okay, so how can we support that? How can we support that? So um, we were looking at how to support the human body. What does it need? Okay, now in the same way that a, a plant needs nutrition, a plant needs light and a plant needs uh, water, if you give a plant those things in the right proportions, it will thrive. If you give it in the wrong proportions, it will wilt and probably die. Now, th th similarly, we need these things. Now we're more complex because we're human beings, but if you give us diet, sleep, exercise, and the other things on that list in the right volume, then the human organism will thrive. It'll survive and thrive. It won't just live, it'll live well. And if you deviate from, from these requirements, you are likely to risk being ill, okay? So this is, this is not a, a treatment schedule. This is um, a conceptual map, if you like, or a, or a checklist. So if somebody's not well, you could have a look at this list and say, well, this is where they're deviating from it and that's why they're ill. So let's, let's test it with a couple of examples. Take, for example, um, diabetes, all right? Um, so diabetes is one of the three big NHS problems. So the, the medical model would treat diabetes with metformin, okay? Now, I've been taking case histories for 33 years, and I'll tell you um, that the majority of people, because um, I ask everybody, you know, illnesses, operations, and accidents, and they say illnesses where I've got type 2 or type 1 diabetes, 95% of diabetics are type 2. Um, and Michael Mosley will tell you, and he's a medical researcher, and Michael Mosley will tell you that you don't have to have type 2 diabetes. You can get rid of it using um, diet and, of course, uh, you know, reducing sugars and carbohydrates. You can get rid of it by sleeping well, because when you sleep well, your sleep regulates weight and insulin control, right? So there's, there's probably nothing on that list which wouldn't help a diabetic. And... I think it's really important to get this across to diabetics <laughs> um, rather than just giving them metformin. So I'd be really interested in setting up um, some kind of key worker group with the NHS in order to give advice to diabetics. And that's just one example for one disease, if you like. Now, you can apply all sorts of um, health problems to this framework. I mean, uh, let's take of a woman who can't conceive, for example. So uh, why can't she conceive? I mean, it might not be her fault. It might be a low sperm count in a partner, but it might be because her, her environment's rather toxic. So the, the egg isn't staying. So what would we do? We'd, we'd, we'd go back to diet and we'd detoxify and try and make the environment more friendly. But then we come down to joint mobility. And it's been my experience over the years that when women have had their spines manipulated uh, at the level of um, T10 to L1, because that's the innovation for the fallopian tubes and the uterus. They've gone away and been able to conceive because the vitality from the nervous system has gone to those reproductive organs and allowed them to function properly. So rather than bothering with IVF, why not do the natural things first and, and see what works? Now, I think it's really important to explore why we should be encouraging this shift towards understanding how to support our own bodies. Um, and if we're giving people information about how to be well, we are asking them to take responsibility for their own health. And if we can help people to get rid of diabetes, heart disease and cancers, all of which are lifestyle related problems, then it's going to be a lot better for the NHS. Just, just bear in mind that um, diabetes, heart disease and cancers account for 70 billion, that's seven zero, 70 billion pounds worth of expenditure 
every year. And yet, these are problems which can be dealt with at home by people understanding how to take responsibility for their own bodies. I think it's incredibly important that we somehow get this simple information out into the community. And I think, you know, when Theresa May in 2018 pledged 20 billion pounds to the NHS for more nurses and doctors, she might have been better spending it on an education programme for people in order to um, help them understand how to do this. So thank you. I I'm really would welcome some questions because I'd really like to be challenged and tested over this to see how it stands up. But I just want to finish by saying that um, I like the idea of shared management. I like the idea of people buying into the process of understanding their own, own health. It gives them control and, um, and it can be done at home. It's empowering and it could be so much cheaper. We could actually save the NHS. How topical is that? So I'm going to stop there and just, um, you know, if you've got any questions, fire away, otherwise we can move on. Um, that is the central message. Um, and I think it's a really, really important one, not just for our local communities, but for the wider communities as well. And it's become a passion of mine. I'm really, you know, although I'm working hard as an osteopath here for, for my family, um, I'm very keen to get out into the community and, and do some of this work. Um, and I'm, that's why I'm very excited by some of the concepts I've heard this morning, by some of the, by the platform which is available to us. Uh, I'm sure this is something that the Health and Innovation Project could work with. I'm sure it's something that the, um, the Eden Project could work with. So um, I think there's huge potential for us to make a difference here. Charles, are we not really also wanting to, if, you know, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Um, are we not really not also wanting to go into a community level within schools? Because, you know, this information can be given out in a different way, you know, I, if you're bringing it up from the community in terms of age, in terms of learning. So is this not also an educational issue as well? I'm not saying that teachers should be taking care of children to the extent that they do, but is this not an educational issue? Well, I couldn't agree with you more. It absolutely is. I think the basics for health, um, for understanding the health process should be taught in schools. But I think there are ways of getting into the community. I think key workers could be established to help people with diabetes, heart disease and cancers. Um, and with the community groups that we've got, we can put people into community groups to talk about health and, and well-being and diet and exercise and sleep and all these other imp important issues. And you can't separate one out from the other. You know, what I see so much is... Um, um, it's diversity, you know, magazines, TV programs, where you're talking about, uh, I don't know, turmeric or talking about exercise, but there's no coordination. There's no, um, bit like Dan was saying earlier, earlier what we need for healthcare um, understanding is, is coordination of all these things being brought together so it can be presented as a package. It's no good just talking about exercise because we just talk about exercise. You're losing out on sleep and diet and all the other things. The human body can't be taken into different compartments. You can't just talk about immunity because it's part of the cardiovascular system, it's part of the gut system, it's part of the hormonal system. You've got to talk about all these things as a whole. Um, and by doing that, uh, you've, got, you've got to talk about all the opportunities that you've got for affecting them, which are the seven principles of health. Aren't we also in a political situation? Because if the, if the if the political body are not are, are using the welfare state as a form of management as opposed as a form of support and i know i'm going wide here but if we keep doing this and if we keep voting people in who use this as a form of management as opposed to a form of support then we're absolutely missing out on the education that is needed and the conversations that need to come up because don't then the public rely on them being managed by a welfare system Yes, you and I need to explore what you just said. <laughs> and, oh, shut uh, up. And do something about it. <laughs> uh, I've got me, and I'm looking to see if there's anybody else. Um, Charles just used the word opportunity. Um, I often hear him saying at work, you know, that what you hear on the news is all about ill health, not about health.